Hey guys, welcome back. Hey, so um, I was asked on a comment about how I go into the design process or how I how I even start out when I'm doing the bikes um, or pretty much anything I do because on top of doing custom bikes I am a metal artist and that's what I love doing um, bikes just turned out to be something that I could do that was basically like a rolling art for me and I I enjoy doing it um, so I want to go over the design process of how I start out what I use to get that going and we're just gonna jump right into it and see where it goes all right so like anything else you need yourself pen pencil paper and I do have these here you can get these on Amazon or or whatever um, get yourself one of these little circle dudes here it's gonna help you with lining everything up it's gonna help you with drawing your circles perfectly all right guys so what I usually like to do is uh, for me on design and I already have the design in my head and I think it does help that I know how the bicycle or how a bike works so before you even figure out a design you need to understand how it works and because because when you're drawing these up yeah you can draw it on paper all you want to but can you convert it over to metal metal doesn't move like the pen does so I like to have an idea I always start out just kind of taking it, taking the the um, template here and just doing a line just so I know where my ground's going to be. It doesn't need to be perfectly straight. It's not a real art to it. Um, I grab my pencil. When I am doing this template, um, I always do exaggerated big wheels. <laughs> so I'll usually pull out, I believe, this is the uh, two and a half inch wheel here or you can do the two and a quarter I think I usually do the big one um, I'll place that as far across the paper as I can to give me as much room as I need and again these little templates have these little lines on them so that you can make sure your stuff is straight so I'll start off by just going where those lines are and then I'll draw my first circle now the reason those lines help you is because now you know where the center of the circle is going to be. Same thing like when I'm doing my dimple dies. It's the exact same thing. So just get across there. And if you want to get real technical, you can run this all the way down and then you'll know exactly where the other wheel needs to be or the back wheel. Um, I do know on my frames the way that I design them is that I like my head tubes to be below the top of the wheel so when my head tube is on here you're going to notice that if you were to run a line from the top of the wheel straight down my head it'll usually go into the center of my head tube um, depending on how if it was a 29 inch sometimes that's above your head tube so that's kind of how I figure out my angle so I uh, like to run just kind of take your template run your angle across there now you know that that's the center of the wheel we want to step out just a little bit more because we don't I don't like running my forks directly underneath so I just kinda just kinda guesstimate where you were here I'll kinda move it over just to give myself a little bit more room and then I will draw my head tube sorry um, again I know that this is gonna be here so my head tube then I'll draw just like that the rake of your drawing it may not actually be what you come up with when you're when you actually build the frame because I, I have no way to calculate what my rake's going to be um a lot of people ask me what it is and honestly i set my frame up i built one that seemed to work perfectly and then i set my table up to that frame and then i welded that area to where every time I put down my head tubes that's just what comes up and it seems to work so here's where you're going to figure out do you want your frame to be more of a cow digger where it's got that front point do you want your frame to come down and turn um, that's another you know it's up to you so for this one let's say I'm going to go really low ground clearance so I'm going to do real light right here pretty trees we're going to do pretty trees um, we're going to come down 
and when you're doing any kind of turned bottom you will never have a massive turn here so just give yourself a little bit you can even use your template if you want to but that's a little bit excessive on the turn so I'll come here and then I'll start turning like that and again this is just drawing you're not you know it you're giving yourself an idea because you want to have an idea what it could look like and you can go right off the T if you want if you want to make this drawing and you want it to be exactly how you do it then that's fine um, I don't tend to do that I, I kind of just use these to give me an idea um, and then I'll come over and I'll do the next tube And then we'll come down here. And now we're going to start getting into the other section of it. So this is where our seat's going to go. Now on a frame, you need to know where your head tube is going to be to where your seat's going to be. Um, this really is going to... I, I think I run a normal 34 inches, anywhere from 32 to 34 from here to seat. Um, pedal to center post of the seat is probably more important because if your seat's real low you've got to come out more this way the higher your seat the the more that this is going to have to go it kind of does this number so the lower you go the more you're kicking out um, I, I run my bottom bracket usually in that vicinity anyway so I usually like to take my measurement from here to here here to here this measurement here is going to be from your inseam so whatever the whatever your pants inseam is you want to be centered to that inseam that'll help you guys figure out how far apart your pedals are need to be um, don't worry about the outside here worry about center to inseam so now here's where i'm going to kind of figure out my next wheel um we did that so i'm going to run my wheel roughly here you're going to do the same thing again And really when I'm just doing my designs it's something that it needs to look you know pleasing to me and this is this is the reason why I only build my frames when people ask hey will you build will you build a frame for me and I, I say no I only build mine if you want to buy something from me that I've already built then I'll sell it but I'm not taking orders to build frames because I'm not trying to build other people's ideas or trying to reach or you know Trying to get the words out of my mouth here but trying to uh be able to uh, reach their expectations on what they think their frame would look like and if somebody draws something for you and hands it to you and you have to try to make it, it might not work out and that takes too long and it gets too frustrating so always find the center of the wheel i like to draw my my uh bottom bracket here i'm gonna drop out i'm sorry and my dropouts kind of go like that i know what my dropouts look like you can actually just design your dropouts right here. Um, next thing, I do like to always, a lot of my frames are always kicked back. So since they'll be kicked back, I can use this here. And this will give me an idea of where I want my seat to stop. So there you go. And then, of course, your seat's going to go here. Do the same thing. I'm just going to do this quick sketch so we're not here all day. And then I'll follow that down. So there you go. So now you've got your primary uh, part of the frame, the main center section of the frame done. Um, I draw my seat. I'm not an artist by any means, so when it comes to drawing, this is just so I draw pretty much always the same way. Um, now I want to figure out what do I want to do in my center section? Do I want, because this part here is what's really holding your frame together. So let's say we're going to go in with one of these here we're gonna go in with that center tube coming off Again, that's why we're doing this in pencil because you're gonna go back over this in pen and erase it there you go and then I'm gonna do something like off the top here and then we're gonna kick it also when you're designing your frame this is gonna help you figure out how much metal are you gonna need because I can tell you with experience, this is going to take up almost a four-foot section. That's going to take up almost a four-foot section. 
this is going to take up almost a four foot section. You might be able to use some of the bend here or here, possibly. And that's going to take up a, a big section. You're going to have little pieces left over that you may not be able to do anything with. So figure it out. You got uh, right now, if you're at metal prices, you're at like $40, I think, for all for four feet of this. So if you're, uh, you know, that's how you're going to figure out your prices. This center section, a frame out of pocket at, at a normal cost from a metal supply, at least here in Florida, is going to cost you almost $300 just in metal. Um, so realize that when you are drawing your design also, because maybe you don't want to run. Maybe you want to run a one inch tube here because they're a little cheaper, or maybe you don't want a center section here, you know? All right, so now I know Here's where you want to figure out your legs. Um, big thing with design is, yes, you can do some really wicked looking legs, but don't forget your chain has to come from here to here. If you draw, if you take your legs and you go right here and you turn it in, that chain's going to hit. So you, you're, you're not going to be able to know that while you're building a frame. You're going to want to know right now, when I'm designing this, where is, where is my chain going to come through? The lower your seat, the less room you have. So most of the time, when I'm doing these legs, I will kick them up just a little bit. And a lot of times my legs are very basic. They're, they're very basic, maybe just a small kick up. Um, maybe this one's straight. Uh, what I'll do is usually I'll take this one here and then I'll just kick it down and I'll do it as a mandrel bend so it'll be all one bend or a compound bend, sorry. But you get the idea here. My dropout goes like this. And now you can see how that goes. I can also run that straight if I wanted to. Um, sometimes if you're looking for more of a flow, you'll want to draw this bar to come here and then that, that bar to run into it so that it has almost like it goes, even though it's not all one. Um, it's very seldom that I'm going to run a front to back tubing just because the, the the way the metal works it wants to go like this and then you have to figure out how to bend stuff in and, and if you screw up you just wasted you know you just wasted four feet of of thirty dollar metal um so that's the reason i kind of run my legs usually pretty basic if i'm running legs that are going to turn down that's no big deal um that you can do because they are going to those are out of the way of the chain. I'll show you here. Um, so when I design this one here, I know that the chain's kind of come through, but because the only attachment we might have is here or up here, it's not going to get in the way of the chain because on the sides of this frame here, it was completely open. So those are things you don't have to worry about, but you do have to worry about the height of your seat, where your springs are going to go. You can buy one inch, two inch, three inch springs to help you out there. But again, you need to know this area uh, as far as where your legs are going to go and stop and then make sure because again you need to be from here to here here to here all right so again here we're back at this part i don't want to bore you guys too much but really this is how i figure out what i'm doing i'm going to come over here probably do a, a simple triple tree um things that are easy to draw Okay, remember your wheel's centered here, so sometimes I will draw my extension. This way I can know exactly what I'm looking at. I'll use my dude here. Bring it down. Bring it down. There you go. Grab your eraser. Make sure you got an eraser because you're going to need it. But this gives you that idea of what you're looking at. Where do you want to run? Do you want to run that extended dropout? Do you want that wheel? Because if you could see, if I were to take my wheel, and all these things you need to take into consideration, and these, and you're doing something custom. So if it came down to it and you're, you were to build this whole thing and you put your fork on and your wheel's touching, and this is why we do mock-up before we do anything, is now you know, well, you know what? When I used a, a stock or when I bought my fork and this is how it came and I tried to use it that way, well, my tire's hitting and if I'm not, I'm not level down here, so I gotta move the frame down. You build you some extended drops, you move that wheel out, gets rid of that. But I am a big fan of 
keeping it somewhat tight in this area. I like, that's how I like to design my frames. I like them, everything real nice, tight, and compact. I don't want my wheel way out here and my fork be 40 feet long. I'm not into the chopper style. Um, if that's your style, great. That's because everybody does have their own style as far as what they like. I'm not a big chopper guy. I like more of a bobber style frame where everything is nice and tight. Um, I always throw the headlight in because now that you've moved that wheel out, Without a headlight, it kind of looks goofy because the wheel's sitting out so far in front of the frame. So you know, give yourself an idea. There's the brackets for the frame. Headlight goes here. Super easy. Okay. So next thing we got to do is figure out some handlebars. I don't build handlebars. Um, I know how I want them to look, but this is probably where I struggle the most as a fabricator is when I do do the bars and I have an idea what I want, it never comes out like I see in my head. Because you gotta, I, I like my bars. I don't like big, big ape hangers. I like bars that are kind of nice, tight, and close that kind of come down and have some, you know, kind of lean forward. Um, so I'll kind of do something like these. They're very cartoonish, but you get the idea. Again, do everything in pencil so that you can trace back over in pen. And I didn't intend for this to become like an art episode, but <laughs> I just wanted to give you kind of an idea of what I go through when I'm designing these. And, and it's basically, like I said, just needs to be very, uh, very pleasing to my eye is, is how I mainly say, okay, yes, I want to build that, you know, do, does this work for me? So now I'm going to take my template again. I'm going to go to a smaller hole and because it has those little lines in there, you can now see how far apart you need to be. These little lines will stop on top of that circle. Come around, boom, you got a tire. And here's where if you wanted to do a figure out a fender, um, if you want to run a fender, here's where you can kind of guess what you need to do and what type of fenders you want to run. So there's your basic drawing of a frame. And then again, I'm going to take a pen, go through everything. Let's say, let's say I want to run a fender on here. You want to know what it's going to look like. So take your fender. I already know I like a shorty bobber fender, same way. And then if you want to do any sort of any kind of mounting or whatever, if you let's say you wanted to add some center tank plate in there, this is where you want to design it, kind of see where you're at and um, go from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you have any questions or comments, comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you think anything um, of the stuff that you'd like to see me do, uh, this is like a really basic drawing that you guys can easily do. It doesn't take any major skill, but just keep that into consideration when you're doing your design that where's your seat gonna be? Do you like it above the tire or below the tire? What's your distance is gonna be? Um, and that's really how I figure it out. And then I like things to flow and I want them to move. I want the frame to look like, and the reason I kick it back, I like the frame to look like it's kind of moving when it's not moving. So. Thanks, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit that like button for me. And I appreciate it. And y'all have a good one.